Third down and a long one. Jacobs back in the game. The rookie for the touchdown. Rivers airs it out. Allen passes. Picked. Intercepted by Carl Joseph. And now the, the team that we've been talking about the whole video. Um, I, <laughs> it's so sad. <laughs> they need they need no no introduction. Um, if you guys if you guys don't know how the schedule works, basically all the divisions. So the um, just to explain why they have such a tough schedule. Um, obviously, they play their division. They play yeah. six, six times in their division. Tough, um, tough and, division. Just to yeah, begin. for one, that's a tough division. And then um, each division plays a division from the other conference. So they're playing um, for for the AFC West. They're playing the NFC South this year. So you've got Tampa Bay, um, the Saints, um, even Carolina can maybe beat them this year. <laughs> Consider the Raiders. And then you've got um, the Falcons too, which yeah. I mean, even even the bottom teams in that division are half decent. Yeah. And then you play the team that you you placed in the division, in, or you, so like if the Eagles placed first in the NFC East, then they play whoever placed first in the other three NFC divisions. So the yeah. Raiders placed I forget I think it was they were tied for second last year. I forget what the yeah. tiebreaker was, they were but third in the division I think. Okay. Um, but they were – so they play a couple other teams. Um, I forget. They're, the AFC division they're playing this year is the East. And then the other two AFC teams they play are the Colts. Unfortunately, the Colts play the same in the division as in last year, but kind of stacked up this year. And yeah. then um, who's the other team? <laughs> the Browns, who are probably going to be a little better. But, I mean <laughs> – for a team like the Raiders to have this schedule, it's pretty tough. But that's pretty much the explanation on like the yeah. analysis of the schedule. But um, I'll give my initial thoughts on the roster. I think like I think I said at the beginning of the video, but like they had a solid off season. Um, they, they added like they added a lot of solid players. Um, like on defense, they had this Nick Nick Quickowski guy from the the Bears who has showed a lot of flashes last year. I think he can be good. Corey Littleton from the Rams, or I forget, I think he's from the Rams. Um, good linebacker, Malik Collins from the Cowboys, Jeff Heath from the Cowboys, who's like a solid role player. Um, yeah. Prince of Mukamara, solid corner. Demarius Randall, solid safety. All solid players, you know. But, like, yeah. not really much star power in that group. Um, hmm. They added uh, Damon Arnett in the draft. Amik Robertson later in the rounds who's shorter, but I think could be like an Avante Maddox type of guy. And Madre Harper, who we interviewed, um, but Madre can only play with cornerback position. You know, Madre can't account for the other guys who are making mistakes. <laughs> um, yeah. But and anyway, um, just to get out my Madre Harper hype, just so you guys know, he's gonna he's gonna be starting by midseason. But anyway, um, <laughs> it, I mean, it, I like the Henry Ruggs addition. Definitely yeah. was early. Definitely was early in the draft. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, uh, but I, I, I think I think, that I think was the right pick for them though because that kind of is like a Gruden type pick yeah for sure especially picking Quell and Farrell at number four um the year before that yeah. um, and you know Brian Edwards is really nice in the third round I think that's a big addition yeah. um I, you know you guys know I've talked about Lynn Bowden before I'm a huge Lynn Bowden fan Swiss Army Knife on offense and I, even like Zay Jones and Hunter Renfro kind of showed flashes last year I yeah. feel like maybe they can contribute um and then you got Mariota and Carr at the QB uh, position. We're going to have, like, a good competition. But, I mean, with all of this said, point being – oh, one more thing. I do really love J Darren Waller. And now he's going to yeah, get – Yeah, I was, was going to bring him up. He's a – he's a good, Yeah. Um, but – Yeah, exactly. Um, but point being with all of this, like, outside of maybe Josh Jacobs, who I really like, like, there really just isn't that star power you need in this division to yeah, compete for I a championship. I just don't – especially, you know, I'm, I'm not a fan of Gruden. I said that he rode – well, yeah. as an analyst, I am. But, like, he rode um, Tony Dungy's Tampa Bay team that he left over and took them to the championship. I don't really think Gruden was the primary reason for that. But, yeah, I, I think it's just going to take time. And 
unfortunately, firepower is just overpowering the team aspect of the game. Not that there's not a team aspect. I mean, the Eagles took a practice squad to the playoffs last year. But, you know, yeah. in AFC, it's a little bit different, in my opinion. So what do you, what do you think about this team? I mean, you kind of hit on everything. I mean, I'm not really in love with Gruden as a coach. The only, the only really star, and I don't even know if you can really consider him a star yet, is Josh Jacobs. Yeah. Um, I love Josh Jacobs. <clears throat> I think that was a great pickup. Um, sh- uh, shout out Josh Jacobs for completely carrying my fantasy team once. So, <laughs> uh, that was a steal in the late rounds, but. He's a solid running back, but at the same time, like, they don't have star power. Also, not to mention, we both know Gruden is big on the quarterback position. And he, like, lives and dies by the QB. And the problem is he does not seem like he is in love with either of these guys. And (laughs) Gruden really needs a guy that he is crazy about to really pair well with this person. So, with all that being said, when Gruden doesn't really have it, because I'm going to be honest, I like Derek Carr. I think he's a nice guy. I think he's a good dude. Um, but I'm like, he's average. Like he, I feel like he's kind of like, kind of like a Dak Prescott type. He just needs everything to be in place for. And I think Mario is the same way. Yeah, he's just a younger Derek Carr. You need every single thing to be in place for this kid to work out. Both could – I mean, Dak's a starter, so both of them could be starters. Yeah. But you just – everything needs to be perfect. And in Vegas, it's not. Far from it. Um, I shouldn't say far from it. They got solid players, but they just don't have stars. And you need some stars on both sides of the ball. Yeah. uh, To really do well. So – and again, not in love with Gruden as a coach. I love him as a person, love him as an analyst, but I just don't think he fits in today's NFL. Yeah, for sure. So why don't we jump into week one? Um, yeah. actually, well, actually, one of the more favorable matchups of the whole schedule, um, considering yeah. their schedule. <laughs> but they're going to have to travel to Atlanta, or not Atlanta, sorry, Carolina, all, all down south. Um, but Carolina, um, I'll go first in this one. I think it's going to be a close one. You got two teams kind of trying to move. The Raiders went 7-9 and nine last year, I think. And then um, the Panthers, I think, went 7-9 and nine as well. But, you know, around that mediocre tier, they're both trying to, like, kind of move out of that phase into the next phase. Um, so I think just because we've talked about the Matt Rule era getting off to a slow start, um, I, think, I think they might, you know, Carolina, the thing with them is, these guys are learning a whole new system with all new players versus the Raiders have had this system. They are adding new pieces, but they do have guys who have learned the system and were able to get some wins last year. So I'm going to go with the Raiders on this one to start out the season, 26-23. Um, I think you're going to see Josh Jacobs have a big game just because he's been there for a year. And I think you're going to see a deep pass to Henry Ruggs to start his career. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to have to agree with you. I think this is a pretty – I shouldn't say pretty easy, but I, I feel like this is a pretty safe bet to give the Raiders the, you know, give the Raiders their win this season. There won't be many of them in my <laughs> my predictions, but um, I think they get the win here. I think it'll be a, you know, Matt Rule era, like you said, going to start out slow, but I think they'll pull it off. Yeah, and then, oh, man. <laughs> it just gets bad. <laughs> oh. right, in, right at week two. <laughs> Monday Night Football versus the, the Saints on ESPN and ABC. So, I mean, everyone's going to be watching this game. Well, I, I mean, oh, man. I don't have anything to say on this except this is going to be very ugly to watch Sean Payton and his team just completely obliterate this Raiders roster. It's sad. But um, the, the, the welcome to the new stadium is not going to be very welcoming. No. That's all I have to say on that. Um, I'm going to have to agree with you. This is going to be terrible. Um, <laughs> the only bright spot will in this whole game will be Booger saying something colossally stupid. I'm not <laughs> even joking. Like, I think Booger is just going to come out of the gate with something like the teacher comment where he was like, 
he was a middle schooler and he was just like attracted to his teacher and he suddenly liked math. <laughs> I'm like he's gonna come out with one of those because this game will be so boring. And I just want to see him make an outrageous comment like that live. So I'm I'm I, I'm excited for that aspect of it. But really, this game is gonna be a bloodbath. Um, wouldn't be surprised if you get Jameis Winston getting a lot of reps <laughs> at, at some point in the game. <laughs> Maybe we see some Nathan Peterman on, on the Raiders side at some point. But um, yeah, why why don't you go back to back? What what do you think happens when they go into Foxborough? I think this is a loss too. I mean, Bill Belichick against John Gruden. I'm taking Bill every time. <laughs> it'll be a good time for Jarrett Stidham if he's still in. Be I think it'll show New England that. He might be their guy in the yeah. future. Um, so I think that's, that's going to be <laughs> – what do you think? Oh, man. Uh, oh. Nothing different, man. 24-10 to 10 win for New England. Um, the defense just completely shuts down this Raiders offense. Um, oh. Yeah, it, oh. nothing crazy. Just pretty simple. Yeah. Uh, week four, uh, Buffalo oh. comes to town. Oh. <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> the losing streak still continues um, for me, at least. Uh, I think I think maybe Josh Jacobs can like wear the, the defense down, but uh, maybe they can run some play action off of it. <laughs> I, I don't know what else to say. I just think this Bills team is so much more complete. Um, I mean, to be quite honest, I wouldn't be surprised if Josh Jacobs gets injured here because they're going to have to – he'll be, like, carrying yeah. the of the entire Raiders team. Wouldn't yeah. be surprised if he just gets leveled at some point. I love Josh Jacobs. I do not want to see that happen. Mm -hmm. But I feel like Gruden just knows that he cannot air out the ball um, in this game. Yeah. With, with the McCourty brothers. So, <laughs> I, I, I just – I don't even know what else to say. I mean, it's – they're going to win. Pretty, like, oh, wait, pretty not the – I'm Buffalo. I'm so dumb. The McCourty brothers are on New England. I'm like – Oh, wait, yeah. We're thinking about the previous matchup. Yeah. I, I mean, but still, still, it doesn't matter. Tredavious White. Tredavious White, that's who I was thinking of. Yeah. It, it's not – like, it, forget about it. They, they, yeah. Really um, and then <laughs> – I mean, not only do they, they not have their first win in the new stadium to this point, but to make matters even worse, they have to go to Arrowhead Stadium in week five. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who set up this this streak of these this weeks two to five, but <laughs> this is absolutely terrible for the, the Raiders. I don't know why you wouldn't spread this out, but uh, I have a – a 35 to 7 beating. I wouldn't be surprised if the Chiefs put up 50 in this game. Um, but oh. yeah, so oh, you know, I just sad. think the firepower is just way too much for the Raiders to compete. Oh with. yeah, they can't handle it. <laughs> Same thing for you. Yeah, I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna elaborate. Let's just. And thankfully, they got this much needed Week Six bye week. I mean, I mean, much needed bye week oh. to follow this. This four four game stretch that is just absolutely just spend a whole terrible. week crying. I feel like. What'd you say? We're just gonna spend their whole week crying, it's like just in tears a whole week. I, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if they were back at practice during this week. Um, with with how the the first two weeks are gonna go. Oh yeah. Um, week seven, uh, Sunday night football. Gruden faces his old his old team. What do you think, Ian? Any this shot here? This could get so hard flexed, in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, because they're going to be what? One, one game, winning one game. One what will four. they be? One and four, one and five. Th th this game I could see getting flexed instantly. Yeah. But, um, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I'm actually, this is my one surprise, one, one of my surprises on the schedule. I'm going to have the Raiders taking those up here by some chance. I don't know how they're going to do it, again, as I said earlier. Um, but I think Nelson Aguilar is going to torch that defense. And <laughs> <laughs> But I think I think just, like, since it's the game in their home stadium, week seven, 
they have to get off the schneid and win one game in that new stadium. Yeah. You know, like that would just be a disgrace. Because then if you lose that game, you're waiting until week 10 against – well, weeks 10 and 11 against Denver and Kansas City to win your first home game. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, so, oh. I'm just going to – I'm going to go with the win here, um, especially since it's against his old club. I'm going to go 28-24, nothing crazy. Um, I, I don't know if Bruce Arians and Brady are the best fit for each other, so maybe that factors in. But, yeah. So, did you have this one as a loss? I did. Okay. I, I just – I just see Brady. I mean, look, I'm not, if all of you have, haven't picked up on it by now, I loathe Tom Brady, and I don't think he's going to do incredibly well in this Tampa Bay offense. I don't. I don't think they are going to be the powerhouses that everyone thinks they are. But this defense will not be able to hang. And Brady, this is early enough to where Brady, I feel like, can still throw the deep ball pretty well um, to Godwin. And I think ultimately it's going to show in this game. They just won't be able to hang with them. I have them losing this game, too. Gotcha. And then they head to Cleveland to play uh, your, your guy, Baker Mayfield, in week eight. So what do you think happens, Ian? I can never get bet against Baker. Come on. <laughs> I, I have Cleveland absolutely making the Raiders just bite the curb. I mean, it is – look, Cleveland – really needed two things last year, a line and a head coach. And I feel like they got both. Kevin Stefanski, I feel like, is very is very underrated in how well he – and how much he helped Kirk Cousins. I mean, he lifted the man to his first playoff win. Um, I think he really helped develop Kirk Cousins. And Kirk Cousins, love him. Like, top three favorite quarterbacks – in the NFL. I love Kirk Cousins. But at the same time, he is no spring chicken. And he's an older guy. And to be able to develop him like that is pretty impressive. And I'm really excited to see what he can do with Baker Mayfield. It seems like he really knows what worked for Baker in Oklahoma. And I think he's really going to translate that into the – I think he's going to try and run like a Lincoln Riley style offense. Um, in Cleveland, which I think will work great with Baker. I don't think that that Raiders defense can keep up with that. Just short, quick passes, you know, five yards, 10 yards, 12 yards. Then we're going to run Nick Chubb. We're going to run Nick Chubb a little more. Then I'll be five, 10, five. Oh, let's dump it off to Kareem in the backfield and he'll get about, you know, he'll break off for a little bit of a run. There, there are so many loaded weapons on this, this Cleveland offense. And they have a good defense. You're getting, from what I presume, Miles Garrett looks like he's going to play the whole season. Um, you get Miles Garrett. They might even sign Jadavian Clowney, which would be huge for their defense. Um, I, I just really like Cleveland here, especially against the Raiders. <laughs> yeah, I have, uh, I have the Raiders losing this one 30 to 23. I just think the Kevin Stefanski edition is just going to boost that team so much. Oh, and- yeah. I think I think you get Chubb going in this game, it could be over. Um, yeah. When Chubb gets going, it's just it's, it's fun to watch. It, pretty pretty masterful. Um, not oh, upset yeah. about that. I mean, I think for me, I have them. I have the Raiders beating the Bucks, so I think they come out slow this week, riding their high like, oh, you know, we can get back on the season, and, <laughs> and they come out and just completely um, blow this one versus Cleveland. But yeah. um, <clears throat> week nine. Uh, we both have Herbert starting this game, um, and we went over it. We have – I think well, we both had the Chargers win this one, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then week 10 Denver. versus the Broncos. Um, we both had the Broncos win this one, right? Yeah. And that <laughs> that the Chiefs. <laughs> we had them lose, both losing the Chiefs. Um, so, I mean, we just went through, like, three games right in a row in the division there that we just, like – we already talked about we had them losing all of them. And then um, now you get into this Atlanta matchup. You're heading to Atlanta, um, one o'clock oh. game. I, I think just we've talked about Atlanta already just being so inconsistent and unreliable. I think the Raiders are going to break their losing streak here. And um, Atlanta is going to be in their midseason form, as I mentioned. And, um, you yeah, know, again, I'm sorry to the Atlanta fans, but. Um, I think they're just going to start to go downhill. I think both teams are going to just be like 
desperate for a win right now. And then the Raiders are going to come out on top and catch the Falcons by surprise for a big road win. Um, 31-27. Yeah. yeah um, I think I have to agree with you. Also, before I forget, I did want to shout out my, bo- my boy Brett from college. We're both big Justin Herbert fans. So had to, had to give him a shout out. Forgot to do it during the Chargers matchup. But shout out Brett. Can't wait to watch Herbert with you, buddy. Um, also, um, but I agree with you. I do think they're going to beat Atlanta here. I just – Dan Quinn is just such a moron, and I just feel like – say what you will about Gruden, but I'll take him over Dan Quinn every single day of the week. Um, and I, I think the rosters are comparable to each other. I mean, I think Atlanta has more talent, but just at how poorly – Dan Quinn manages it. I I just I I just can't see the Raiders losing this. How about in how about in week thirteen versus the Jets? Anything any different or another Jets loss or a Raiders loss? I have the Raiders winning this one just because they're they're feeling all high and mighty <laughs> after beating the friggin' Atlanta Falcons, because that's such a gruden thing to do is get really excited over like one win after a massive <laughs> losing streak. Um, so I, I, I just give him this one just because Gr- Gruden's on cloud nine with his third win of the season and um, um, projections. Yeah, I, <laughs> I have them win this game as well, 35-27. Um, I, <laughs> to your point. I can totally see like the post game video of him giving the locker room speech and just like, guys. <laughs> This is it. This is the run we needed to go on towards the end. Of the year. <laughs> this is what it's all for. This is what it's about. You know, you guys started off rough, but you can always bounce back <laughs> and into these final five weeks of the season. So I can totally see him just like getting so hyped after this game. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just think the Jets are so incomplete that yeah. the Raiders are going to roll over them. Um, maybe not roll over them, but I think it's just going to be a poor matchup. I'm not looking forward to. I hope I don't have to watch this one, but. Yeah. <clears throat> then moving on. Oh yikes! Oh man. Week fourteen versus a, a much improved Colts team that will hopefully be healthy this year. Um, you want to go first on this one? Yeah, because I I have something to elaborate on. <laughs> so I think that they lose this game. Um, Philip Rivers going from one of the worst offensive lines to yeah. arguably the best. Um, the Colts are going to do real, real well this season. Um, you know, uh, I think he's like Rivers is kind of like Brady, except, you know, I think he's in the same position as Brady, but I think he has a better situation than Brady just because I think the Colts are a much more complete team than the Bucks. Um, so I think that they lose here and then, once this loss happens, I, I think they're committed to tanking at this point, and that was why I wanted to bring this up, which is why I think they lose to the Chargers. I think they put in friggin' like A.J. McCarron or something like that, if he's even still on the team. Um, I mean, they are – I think they're just like, you know what, let's try and get Lawrence. Let's try and get Fields. We only won three games. Gruden will take who he wants and, you know, Gruden will get his guy because they are clearly much more committed to John Gruden than Derek Carr and Marcus Mariota. So I, I have them, uh, I have them losing the rest, losing out the rest of the season because of this loss in Indy right here. I gotcha. Yeah. I, I have them losing to the, um, the Colts, thirty-eight to twenty. I just, I really like this Colts team. Um, and I'll put a little like card up. Um, we did a Colts video um, <clears throat> not long ago, a few weeks ago, about Philip Rivers. I just really think he's set up for a bounce back season. Um, I love Naheem Hines. I think he's so fast. Marlon Mack and him, and then you add in Jonathan Taylor. What a backfield yep. that is. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And then. You have T.Y. Hilton, Michael Pittman Jr., who I love, and then Paris Campbell, who people forgot was injured most of the season, was drafted second round a couple years ago. And you've got Jack Doyle and Trey Burton, who I think I've said this before, I think 
they're in the perfect position because they don't have to be like the top tight end because they can both run, they can run two tight end sets and the pressure's off of them to be like the number one guy. Because when Doyle, when Ebron was out, Doyle was like solid, but he wasn't anything crazy as the number one guy. And then yeah. same with Burton. Burton like, was solid with the Eagles as the backup, but with, with the Bears, he was like, he was all right as a, a starter. Yeah. So I think it's just, I think their offense is just going to pop off this game. Um, I think Madre Harper will get a couple interceptions this game, but um, outside of him, uh, I don't think there's going to be much to, <clears throat> much to talk about with the Raiders. Um, yeah. And then that Chargers game, I think I actually had them winning this one um, on the other schedule. Uh, I had them winning. Um, yeah. I just think, I just think at the end of the season, maybe it could go either way with these teams. Um, I think the Raiders will split with the Chargers and get their revenge. Um, I think I think it's going to be – I think Herbert's going to have a good day. I think maybe the Raiders' defense will just somehow, like, step up to the plate and start to, like, get comfortable and, and start to really play well. I think Lynn Bowden's going to have a really nice day, which is as good as the Chargers' defense is, I think maybe he'll pop off and the Chargers might struggle a little bit to contain him. Yeah. Um, but, you know, other than that, yeah, I have I have losses the rest of the year just like you. Um, I mean, I don't know if we even need to really go over these games too in depth. Yeah. We already did the Denver game week seventeen. Um, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you got anything like, to say, go for it. I I just see them. Look, I can't stress enough how big Gruden is on his quarterback, and I, I could just see him at this point being like, you know what, I I just want my guy. Like, I I just want like. Car and Mariota, I tried making it work, but like I, I really want my guy, my high pick. I can pick between her, or not Herbert. I can pick between Fields, Lawrence, Trey Lance. Like I can pick my guy. Also, even though I personally prefer Fields over Lawrence, unpopular opinion, but I personally prefer Fields. But most would take Lawrence first. I could see Gruden taking Fields or even Trey Lance before um, just because he likes his style and he's yeah. very particular to his own opinion. Um, but I could see one of those three being in a Raiders uniform just because I think he'll want his guy in there. Yeah, I, I agree. I think I actually think now that you mention it, I think there's a really good chance they end up with Trey Lance. Um, yeah. Right game. Uh chance with Trey Lance but anyway um I just think like like you said like they've gone with Henry Ruggs who was the third receiver on most boards this year which was a yeah. huge surprise in draft night um oh, I think yeah. everyone thought I mean Judy and Lamb were both on the board um yeah but I mean the year before they went with Clellan Farrell at number four who was like correct me if I'm wrong I think he was projected to go like 16th maybe the first yeah. round around that range um so to your point I mean I, I think there's a good chance we see Trey Lance end up here, which for me, that's uh, it's almost my worst nightmare for him because yeah. I just really Not like Trey Lance. And what'd you say? Not a good situation to step into. No, and I like I I just think like knowing Gruden and how much I feel like he he talked up Carson a lot heading into the draft, he and did. knowing that it's the same school um, and very similar offensive style and uh, type of quarterback. Obviously, Lance runs a little more, but, you know, get the point. I think there's a good chance that he ends up there, which scares me a lot. But, um, yeah, so I had them at 5-11. and 11. Ian had them at 4-12 and 12 this year. Um, oh, I actually changed it to 3-13, and 13, I think. Uh, <laughs> but um, we yeah, had – Yeah, I have 3-13, and 13 actually, because I, I – yeah, I have them 3-13. <laughs> this drive, second down and eight. Oh. Ball on the ground. The Raiders have only forced five turnovers all year and now make it six. Stafford for Galladay. Wow. What and that's play. intercepted. What a play by Daryl Worley. I don't understand about Stafford. You got 6-4 up there. Throw the guy the jump ball. Let him. And that's key. Who's able to room is Daryl Worley, who had that incredible. And it's a fake putt. And this is going to go for a first down and end son to Derek Carrier. And how about that by the Raiders if Incognito doesn't shove it. And it's a touchdown to Moreau. 
in the backfield. Barr looking around. Throws a bullet. Renfro, his second straight week with a touchdown in the Raiders' lead. They think the run. Broken up in the back of the end 